Oh, hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar, just getting my Sunday hamstring stretch in because of my low back. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. Hope the weekend has gone well for you. It's, we're winding up the weekend. This is an impromptu, I should say not really impromptu, but <laughs> it's kind of out of context Facebook Live for me. However, didn't have time to do it earlier this week, so I'm doing it now. Hope your week has found you well. Many of our clients present with obviously low back pain and low back discomfort, and they're told their hamstrings are short and tight and they need to lengthen them. And for many of our clients, that's a true statement. However, have you actually assessed your client to see if that's really their issue and their tight hamstrings are driving their issue? Part of the challenge with the hamstrings or how the hamstrings can contribute to low back issues is when the hamstrings are wet or when the hamstrings are short and tight, they will pull you into posterior pelvic rotation. So what happens for many of our clients, especially our clients that sit too much, they're sitting in posterior pelvic tilt. So let me do that for you real quick. They're sitting in posterior pelvic tilt, which shortens their hamstrings, both at the pelvis attachment as well as at the back of the knee attachment and the fibular head attachment. So what happens is the hamstrings shorten. What else happens is when clients have low back issues that impact their sciatic nerve, specifically sciatic nerve, it could be other nerves, but, but more specifically the sciatic nerve, it can create some compensatory tightness so the client doesn't want to or the nervous system doesn't want to lengthen. So they will also shorten themselves up, especially through the hamstrings, to create less neural sort of stretching. Nerves are just like muscles in the sense that they need to lengthen as well. And if there's some neural tension in the system because of a disc herniation or bulging or some other kind of sort of neural winding up, then the nerves don't glide. So the person will, your client will start to tighten themselves up to not allow that nervous system to lengthen out. So that's another common cause of hamstring tightness. The other issue that will happen for many of our older clients is they have spinal stenosis. Narrowing of the spinal canal where the spinal cord is itself or where the nerves are coming off, the spinal nerves are coming off either side to run down the leg. The common posture for that spinal stenosis is they will go into posterior pelvic tilt. Again, that's why some of your older clients, the older they get, they start shuffling, their stride shortens, they're not able to lengthen, they're not able to extend up because they're trying to protect, I should say, prote protect the neural structures like the spinal cord and the nerve roots, but then also create more space. And you do that by posterior tilt and lumbar spine flexion. But that keeps limiting our client's ability to move and lengthen their hamstrings, move through the hips and lengthen their hamstrings, hence the hamstrings keep shortening. So then they tend to do things like try to straight, stretch their hamstrings like this. And what we see with, for a lot of clients, excuse me, as I turn around away from the camera and show you, should put my butt in your face, apologize for that, is they'll stretch and they stretch away from their actual shortness. Because where most of our clients are short and tight is more, it's in the hamstrings in general, yes, but for most of our clients, it's more the biceps femoris. Biceps, biceps femoris attaching from the sacral tuberous ligaments, fascially attaches up to the sacral tuberous ligament, that ligament way up here. So if you're just watching me you're just now jumping on, you're like, what's, why is he digging in his butt? Because that's where the sacral tuberous ligament is. And then the hamstring comes down to attach into the fibular head right here. Well, when we're walking or doing a hinge type pattern, stiff like a deadlift or something like that, we need to be able to lengthen. So as we're walking and we're rotating towards the forward leg, we need that hamstring to lengthen to allow us to rotate adequately that way. We also need that hamstring, obviously, that biceps femoris to pull that fibular head tight or keep the fibula stabilized, stabilize the SI joint, but we also need it to have the proper length so that we can rotate towards that side. If we have a short hamstring, it can create biceps femor femoris specifically, it will create a valgus knee position because of its attachment. So the knee will become more valgus because of the attachment at the fibular head. However, more importantly, I should say not more importantly, just as importantly, is it will start to change the position of the pelvis. Short biceps femoris will start to rotate the pelvis away from the short side and limit, then limit the ability to rotate internally towards that side. So when we're having our clients lengthen their hamstrings, we want to be very specific so that they actually get the length through their biceps femoris. So again, if we think about it, we want to make sure if this is if, if this is with the biceps the Morse attachment from the ischial tuberosity and the sacral tuberous ligament is coming down laterally, we need to be able to lengthen that biceps femoris so that we can 
hinge. And without that ability, again, sorry, apologize for putting my butt in your face in the camera, but if we can't lengthen to create a good hinge, we will rotate away from that leg because that biceps femoris is shortening down. So we want to make sure, again, that we're lengthening where we need it. So how do we help our clients? First of all, how do we assess for that? Well, number one, you can look at your client's single leg stance. So just how they stand on one leg. Can they stabilize well on that leg? Do they keep their pelvis up over top of their, their foot? Or do they tend to fall like this? Not even fall like this. They're actually contracting this direction. They're, they're doing a, a trendelings or, or compensated trendelling birds or are they even rotating away from that side as they stand on one leg you can check standing rotation can they actually rotate and lengthen that hamstring to create optimal rotation obviously you'll also look at feet together forward bend do they get good length of their hamstrings to reach down and keep their pelvis relatively over their feet or are they here and getting a lot of excessive posterior glide or translation of the pelvis and an increase thoracic kyphosis, two signs that the hamstrings in general are short. So what's your corrective exercise strategy? First, you want to teach your clients, obviously, how to release. Releasing around the posterior hip complex, even releasing around the hamstrings, whether you're using myofascial tools, we will use the Rolga, whatever you have. Then you want to teach your clients how to lengthen. So one of the best ways to help your clients functionally lengthen is through a seated position, but you can also do it standing. I'll show you both versions. So have your client sit so their pelvis is relatively higher. Hopefully you guys can see me. Let me, let me lower the camera down just a bit. So the camera is just a little bit lower. So, have your, so your client is, is seated and make sure that their hips are a little bit higher than their knees. So that way you can just have them brace themselves, relatively speaking, and then just do a very gentle knee extension. What you don't want to have them do is collapse into that posterior tilt because now they're really not lengthening so much. So you want to teach them to get a tall sit on their sit bones and then just do a gentle lengthening. We will generally start our clients lying down, but this is just a different version where you can do it seated. Or you can put the heel down on the floor, soften the ankle, and then do a gentle hinge forward. So just two different versions to teach the client how to maintain the pelvis and move the femoral head, either maintain pelvis position and hinge, or just maintain the pelvis position and do pure hip flexion. So just two different versions of that. Then you want to teach your client how to hinge appropriately. So let me bring it back up here. Hope you guys are doing well. Hello, Jackie Bachmeyer. I think you're probably familiar with this facility that I'm working in right now. <laughs> filming it. <laughs> Thank you for the use of your facility. <laughs> so when we're teaching our client to hinge, we're going to focus them on their tighter side. Maybe it's both sides, but we'll focus them on their tighter side. We want to do, we can do a regular hinge. So just teaching them how to hinge and move that pelvis and the thoracopelvic cylinder over top of the femoral heads. And we can go split stance so where we bring one leg forward, one leg back, keeping the majority of the weight on the forward leg. And then again, we're doing our hinge position, making sure that the client is feeling it in the back side of their hip and through their hamstrings, not in their low back. So again, apologize for putting my rear end towards the camera. But again, if you look at the line on my shorts, the line of the shorts should stay level and not do this. This is a common sign or compensation that your client's biceps femoris is short and they're not able to keep that pelvis squared up to the forward leg. Once you've done that, your client should actually feel really, really good after that. And if you look at reassess them, if you watch them walk, they should feel, they, they will feel, hey, I feel freer through my hips. My forward bend, their forward bend looks smoother, more even, more controlled. And then, of course, you want to teach them how to load it up. You want to teach them how to do a hip hinge. So you want to teach them, you can do unilateral, bilateral loads. Again, just stiff legged -like deadlift. Again, teaching them how to hinge appropriately. You can, again, load this into the split stance position, and obviously you can make it more challenging by going elevated rear leg or, or pattern like that. And there's many, many more hamstring and hip-specific exercises, of course, but again, just understanding that why your clients have short hamstrings and then having a strategic way to, number one, assess your client, and then a strategic way to help your clients develop the ability to lengthen the hamstrings, not lengthen their low back, because a lot of our clients are stretching themselves right into some of their low back issues, and then having a way to, again, just work this pattern or work this new length into some functional exercise patterns, because again, your clients not only need the length, but they need the strength in that position. So make sure that you're doing something to help your clients create, develop, and maintain that stability, that strength they need in the more lengthened position, 
that's how you become a go-to expert for your current clients and attract more individuals that need, want, and will help you, or I should say, will pay you, <laughs> they'll help you, they'll pay you for your expertise. In this three of three, this part three of three series with, of Two Anatomy Geeks, we're discussing this very topic. In the first two topics of this brand new series we're doing, common orthopedic and neurological issues of the lower, or I should say of the spine, we dealt with thoracic outlet, we dealt with how posture impacts the vertebral artery and be, can be a cause of headaches and chronic neck tension. We talked about the brachial plexus. We started to look at the lumbar spine, and this week we'll go more in depth into the lumbar spine, looking at very common neurological issues like sciatica, like foot drop, like hamstring tightness, and how hamstring tightness contributes to common low back issues and disc issues of the low back, as well as spinal stenosis in our older clients. So. If you miss the first two recordings, you can get, as soon as you enroll, you get access to the recordings, you get access to the handouts. And again, more importantly, we want to share this information, the anatomy, biomechanics, and some of the motor control around the spinal issues, as well as neurological issues, so that way you understand why so many of your clients struggle with chronic low back issues and or neurological issues, and what you can do working within your scope of practice to help your clients. And again, we want to teach the anatomy so you understand the foundations of what's happening, both the normal anatomy as well as what happens as your client starts to develop spinal stenosis or disc problems and or you know some of the neurological issues, and then also give you strategies so that you can apply your information. So it's not just like, hey, here's some great information for you. Go figure out how to use it, <laughs> but so that you can actually go and use this information right away. So very similar strategy. I'll share the strategy with you in more depth, show you some different things to think about as it relates to neural tension, as well as it's another common cause of your client's low back pain and discomfort and just things that you can do as a health and fitness professional to help your clients. And again, just the more you understand, the more appropriate you can make your exercises, the more appropriate you, the more appropriately you can address a lot of your clients' issues that aren't getting great results just by doing generic sort of approaches like, hey, pull your knees to your chest. Hey, you know, you should probably stretch your hip flexors out. You know, we'll talk about that this weekend as well. So the link is next to this video. Look forward to seeing you. It's a great community of like-minded individuals, two anatomy geeks. We created this, Jill and I, my fellow anatomy geek, we created this community to attract like-minded individuals who really are just looking to up-level their skill set, their knowledge, so they can help more individuals, more of the general population. So we'd love to have you. It's a great series. And again, we always have a money-back guarantee. If you don't feel like this is the best information, anatomy information around this topic, we'll gladly refund your money. We don't, we don't want you to ever purchase and enroll in one of our programs that you don't feel is like 10 times, usually 10 times the value of the enrollment fee. So we look forward to seeing you. This is Dr. Evan Oser with Discover IMI. Continue to be that leader. Be the light for your clients who are looking for someone just like you to support them, empower them, educate them, and help them accomplish their health and fitness goals. Thanks, guys, for watching. Thanks for being part of our community. Thank you for allowing me to share this information. 